Okay, there's a new feature in Adobe Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud that was just released recently, and it has some really great potentials for us video folks. So what I want to show you, the feature is called Generate. It's a new function underneath the file menu, and essentially uh, we're going to come and we're going to turn this on. But first I want to show you what I've done here. So I have a little Photoshop document. I have a little feathered background thing. Um, it's a background layer here. Here we'll probably call this the, uh, the bar. Yeah. And then we have a name here. And uh, it's my name and the name of the show. Now, um, normally, to get this into Final Cut, the smart thing to do would be to do a Save As, come down here, choose a PNG file format, pick a place to save it, and then save it, at, and you know, give it a name. And uh, then you can drag that into Photoshop, and it'll key very nicely. And because we're making the canvas at 1920 by 1080, it will always um, drop into place exactly um, in the same spot. And... Um, the reason why I always do name keys in either Photoshop if they're uh, static or After Effects if they're animated is because, quite frankly, the text handling tools in the Adobe applications are the best, the very best. So I would never dream of using the character generator in Final Cut unless I really have to. So, um, so that's the way I would do that. Now, the generate tool is very cool. So here's my folder in the... Um, in the finder and you can see here's my PSD file it's called uh, lower thirds and, and I want you to imagine like uh, I just did a project today where I had to do like 25 lower thirds for the piece so this is what you do you come over here and you turn on generate image assets and you check that on and when you do that you'll see the little checkbox there okay now what you're gonna do is anything that you want to make uh, an asset out of or in other words um, a separate image what you do is you append the layer name with the extension of the type of file that you want to make now I want to make PNGs but I want to make a PNG of the combination of both of these things so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a little um, folder they actually call it a group in Photoshop because you know why would we call it a folder if it looks like a folder and then I'm going to name that folder what I want the PNG to be called now I have a standard way I do things I do name I do a hyphen and then I have the, uh, the name of the person, okay? So what you do with this generate tool, now I want to show you this. Here's my, uh, here's my folder in the finder, and here's my lower thirds. So what I want to do is I want to save this as a PNG. So I name this folder .png, okay? Now when I do that, it is ready to make me a PNG, but because there's nothing actually in that folder yet, it doesn't bother doing it because it you know, doesn't want to waste our time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the text layer into that. Now watch the Finder folder. Oh, look at that. Automatically, it's made a folder, and the folder is called hyphen assets, whatever the name of the PSD file is, whatever the name of the PSD file is that has the generate image assets feature turned on. Okay, so it's going, and now if I open that up, it shows me, oh look, there is a file called name Chris Fenwick. Now, I'm going to make this icon a little bigger because I want you to watch this happen here. So you could see there's my name and a little bit of a shadow, uh, but it doesn't have the bar. So if I take the bar and I drag that in to the, um, to the group or whatever they call it, and all of a sudden, now it has the bar. Now you're gonna see that there's a problem because this file is roughly the size of the active pixels in this thing and that is a drag because when I drag these into Final Cut I want them to always you know lock into exactly the right place um, I really don't like it when people bother making images like this and they just smack dab it in the center of the frame and then you know you have to manually position them in Final Cut because then you have no uniformity. So build things where you want them, where you want them to key. All right, so here's the trick I wanna show you. The only way to make this lock in to exactly the right place is if there were pixels out at the perimeter that defined the outer shape or the outer size of this frame. Now this is 1920 by 1080. So what I've done is I've made a, a layer. Now this layer, if you look at it, it has an opacity of zero. And essentially what I did is I zoomed 
I don't even, you know, honestly, I don't even know if we can see this. I'm going to do the little Z tool. Come in here. Come in here. Yeah, I can't even see the pixel. But if I turn the opacity up, there it is. See that little pixel right there? I put a single pixel in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to, and then if I uh, zoom way out, see how do I do this? There we go. And then I zoom way into the lower right-hand corner. Uh, let me see. And there is a single pixel in the lower left-hand corner. So lower left, upper right, at any rate, something that defines the size of the frame. And by putting a pixel there and a pixel there, boom, I got the thing, it's defined. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opacity of that. I'm going to drop it down to 1%. You'll never see it. I defy you to see it. And then I'm going to take that and drag it into the folder here. Now watch the icon in the finder. Immediately it updates. See this image asset thing, once you give something the extension that you want the file to be, it automatically updates all the time. Now like for example here, I'm going to show you, I think the font here is too thin. It's this uh, Gotham light, I think it is. So here, let's open this little guy up and we're going to go to our text tool, letter T here. I'm going to double click on this line. Yeah, it's Gotham light. We're going to change this to uh, Gotham regular or medium. Now watch the icon in the finder. You may even be able to see it. Actually, you know what? Let's make the icon even bigger, ridiculously big. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change this from light. Now we'll change it to medium. Watch the icon. Boom, it changes. Now let's see how that works to our advantage in Final Cut, okay? So here's a Final Cut project. I'm going to step back out to the finder. I'm going to just take this uh, document. I'm going to drag it in onto my PNG's, uh, um, what's this called? Keyword collection. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drag it onto my file. Okay, now there it is. It's got my black bar, it's got my font, but let's say I want to change it. So I step back over to Photoshop and I go, you know what? I really don't want it to be just Digital Cinema Cafe. I want it to be digitalcinemacafe.com. I'm going to save the document or all I really have to do is toggle off of that layer and you'll notice the icon is now different in the finder, which means it's different in Final Cut. So anything that I want to do over here to change this, I just have to toggle off that layer or save the document and it's already saved in Final Cut. Again, it's kind of the sort of fake dynamic link, but this is really cool. Okay, now let's say we want to do we want to add additional names. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to just scale this down a little bit so we can see what happens here. And I'm going to take this folder, I'm going to drag it down onto the duplicate icon. All right. And then I'm going to come over here and what I actually want to call this is uh, this is going to be Alex's name key. And then I'll twirl into here, double click on this layer here, grab it, Alex MacLean. Whoops, not go like that. And now that I have two separate layers, I have the Chris Fenwick layer and I have the Alex layer, right? Click off of that and it is going to automatically generate the f file that I need. Ah, it won't because I forgot to put the... Uh, uh, extension on so PNG and just by adding that extension it gives me another file you see that now I can take this guy toggle into the final cut drag it into there same drill here let's say I delete this one and here's my Alex key all right and again let's say I want to make a change to it so I just double click on this once I have the layer set up right I type com. Now you see, here's the thing. I'm changing the content here, but I'm not changing the name of the folder so that the name of the folder begets the name in the finder. And then that ripples through into um, Final Cut and therefore into your timeline. Okay, so that's the trick there. All right, so anyway, this is the Generate Media Assets brand new feature in uh, the Final Cut uh, in uh, Photoshop and very useful to uh, video editors. Later.